ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ಮೀಲಿತೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ is one of the many kirtans composed by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. This is uh, traditionally sung at midday, at least in Gorya Mart temples. It's sung uh, at midday or late morning during the time of offering the uh, main meal of the day to Lord Krishna. Someone has pointed out that actually uh, Krishna takes his meal in the house of Nanda and Yashoda, not at midday. Uh, in the morning and in the evening he takes in the house, and in the midday he's out in the in the forest. But anyway, following the uh, following the temple schedule, this is the main meal of the day is offered to Krishna at midday. In he, there in the temple he's worshipped as Lakshmi Narayana. So that may be in uh, remembrance of his Vrindavan pastimes that this is sung. This song opens with uh, invocation to Sri Gora Hari, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bhakta Vatsala, he who is affectionate to his devotees, Sri Gora Hari, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Maha, uh, Chaitanya Maha is Gosha Bihari. He performs pastimes in association with his devotees. And then the, then it moves over to Krishna. Nanda Yashomati Chitta Hari. He, Krishna who steals the heart of Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. So there are many songs like this which start off with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then they switch to Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes. The devotees, they see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in performing his pastimes and they it reminds them of the, the pastimes he performed as Krishna in Vrindavan. The similarity is there. It's described in uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita how uh, Nityananda Prabhu organized a festival on the bank of the Ganga f- feeding all the devotees and then everyone was reminded of Krishna's pastimes of his uh, sitting with his cowherd boyfriends on the bank of the Yamuna and taking lunch. So the uh, song describes that first of all uh, Yashoda Mai is calling out to Damoda, Krishna, that now it's time. Time time is up. Or now it's become the time. So come here. Come and sit in the dining room and take your meal. So under the indication of Nanda Maharaj, Girivaradhari, Krishna, the lifter of the best of hills, sits down. So even though Krishna is so powerful, he can lift up huge hills and actually holds up millions of universes, but he sits down on the order of Nanda Maharaj. And uh, all the cowherd boyfriends sit in lines along with Baladi. And some of the preparations which they take are described. A few of them. Not all of them, just a few of them. Shukta, which is a bitter preparation, bit, like a bitter thick soup, I guess you could say. I don't think there's anything in European cuisine that resembles it even. If you've been to Mayapur, you may be taking it. Shukta. Shukta. In Gujarat, they cook it, the uh, Corella with sugar. Unusual. Everything is sugar. It's supposed to be bitter, and then they make it sweet also. Shukta is znači neka preparacija kao gusta juha za koju ne postoji prava zamjena na zapadu riječ koja bi opisala, ali može se probati ako odete u Majapur nekada. Isto tako uh, where they cook the Gujarat to kuhaju to slatko. Chapati sa šećerom. So they don't bother having chapati, they just have big ladus instead. <laughs> ne gnjave se sa chapati, ne imaju ladu, ne mislim toga. Dal, the sabji, everything is cooked with kitchery. Dal, sabji, everything is cooked with kitchery. Sve se kuha sa šećerom. 
So, Shukta, then, uh, yeah, this is the uh, order of taking foods in Bengal. First of all, Shukta, then Shak, which means spinach preparations. There are very many varieties of spinach. Uh, the idea is to begin with bitter preparations. So, uh, Shukta is quite bitter, and then pretty bitter, and then Shak is somewhat bitter. When it says Shak, it doesn't mean one spinach preparation, but that would generally means several spinach preparations. They're different. They can be they're different ones. Helancha shark, part shark, and lal shark, and pui shark. I can't remember the name. Now. There's so many. Once, I, once I made a list of about 20 varieties that I could think of. These are just the plants, and then the way they cook it is that can vary also. Znači, ovo je šak, to nije jedna vrsta špinata, šak, nego postoji šak. više vrsta. Ja sam jednom, šak, lau šak. kad sam nabrajao, došao sam do 20 vrsta. To su samo vrste špinata, a još postoji puno načina na koje se mogu napraviti. Ja, yeah, and then the next item to is uh, bhaji, in the, which means fried preparations. That means just like a piece of... Uh, one slice of eggplant, shallow fried, or one slice of pumpkin, shallow fried, with some spices, or potato, and uh, nalita, I believe that means, uh, that part, that's uh, jute leaves, kushmanda is the uh, pumpkin, dal, uh, dalna means dal cooked with vegetables, dadi is Yogurt, mocha kanda is preparation made from banana flowers. The bora made from, bora means a, uh, hmm, kind of, but what, you get the, the dal soaked, and then you crush it and make a paste, and mix it with, uh, besan, which is chickpea flour and spices, make a ball, and deep fried, and that's a bora. D is not pronounced like a D. Boda. Boda. Something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And usually these are made in advance, and then they're dried in the sun, and then you can use them whenever you want. So, um, there are different varieties. Mudgaba, that means made from mung, and mashaba, mash, that's, uh, that's urdal, so different varieties of dal you can make it with. Rotika literally means small chapatis. There's uh, rice with ghee, and then uh, different kinds of sweet preparations. No, kushtaka, some kind of cake. Kia literally means milk, but it often means uh, milk cooked down or cooked with rice. Payashana means rice cooked with milk. Uh, Karpur, Amrita Kelly, and some some other milk preparation with uh, camphor. That's, uh, that's that's what we call in rubbery. When you cook the milk down and it, be, you know, rubbery. You know, what rubbery is. You know what that is. You cook the milk down and it becomes like thick cream. Bengal has a preparation called sarbhaji. They take that and then they 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 fry that also and add some sugar. Amrita, Rishal, Amrita just means nectarian and tasty. And then it, toward the end of the meal is uh, Amla, Tuk, that means uh, sour preparations, 12 kinds of sour preparations. Yeah. Oh, oh. Then uh, Puris with powdered Puris made with white flour and then with some powdered sugar put on them. Sharpuri. Sharpuri means uh, what in modern Bengal is called malpoa, which means um, which Sar- means uh, cooked down milk with some fried some f- fried dough soaked in cooked down milk, something like that. Ladu means a round sweet. Rashaboli means another kind of sweet, tasty. So did you enjoy hearing about all those sweets?
This is just a small list. If we see in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the, uh, there, in several places there are long lists of the items that are offered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, much longer than this. Oh. That several times that comes, that uh, when Ad- Advaita Acharya offers Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, there's a long list. In Sarvabham Bhatta Acharya, when he feeds Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's a long list of items. Which is, again, it's only some of them. So you may think, well, why? Well, one thing is we may think, oh, that sounds great. I want to, you know, let, let's have a feast. Let's go and enjoy. But the, uh, we may wonder why is such a long list in such a sacred book of so, of so many foods being, food items being described. But the pure devotees, they're describing this list of food, not that they think how nice I'd like to enjoy, but they're enjoying hearing how Krishna enjoys. And the next time, Bhujan Karena Krishna Hiye Kutu Hali. Krishna uh, takes his food, being, uh, he takes, he's, he's into it, he likes it, he's interested, it's, he's uh, enlivened by it. We never find that Krishna is depressed or bored or any such thing. His pastimes are full of activities, joyful activities. This song, uh, it captures the bliss of Krishna eating. It right. describes the bliss that Krishna enjoys while eating. The, Krish, the, the bliss that he has of eating with his devotees, and in this song, all the different kinds of devotees are described. Devotees in Dasyaras, Sakyaras, Vatsalyaras, Shringaras, all the, all the different kinds of relationships with Krishna. They all come together at Krishna's mealtime and they all happily feed Krishna. They all happily feed Krishna and they all happily uh, enjoy along with Krishna. Mm. So this... Uh, You'll find in this song, again and again, there are words for happiness and pleasure which are mentioned. So, uh, of course, Krishna's pastimes are always happy. uh, And eating is one of Krishna's main pleasures. If we hear that one of them, that someone takes pleasure in eating, we think of him as a glutton. I don't know. You're supposed to be the translator. <laughs> Glutton is someone who's just, you know, just uh, unrestrained in eating and just goes well, on kind, yeah, of, kind of gross, you know. <laughs> but uh, for Krishna, it's not just the flavor and the food, but it's all the all the love that goes into it. And actually, not only Krishna, but traditionally all over the world, eating was a family social event, three times or more a day. The the men would work, but they wouldn't go off, you know, 30 kilometers away to work. They'd be close by in the field, and then, then all the joint families, so maybe 30, 40 people would come together three, four times a day to eat. And the women will cook many preparations. But all, the, all, the, all the food is grown at home. Kuchya. And like this uh, dal body I was describing, it's, they may prepare that at home also in advance. This dal body and this papa, all these things, pickles, they're all prepared. Everything is prepared at home. Papadam is the English word. I don't know where that word came from. In India it's called papar. Somehow or other in English it became papadam. Anyone in India call it papadam? No. Even until recently, uh, there were many families in India, especially Marwari families. Uh, even their rich families, but the, the women would prepare every item. I mean, even they'd make the papar and the, the achar, the pickles, everything. They would never take anything from outside. So everything was made with a lot of care and attention and love and cooked and served with love. And just like Nanda Maharaj is here with Krishna, so the fathers will be there with their children, with their sons, and then and then they'll be serving. And there's there's no big rush to 
jump out the door and rush off to the office. It's everyone's got time and they're taking. Uh, I I read some figures that in America the those uh, children who are fortunate enough to live with their parents and there are not that many of them. It's a decreasing number. They get an average of 42 minutes a week with their parents. But in traditional families, they it's, they have at, at least that much three times a day when they sit down to take a meal together. But nowadays, it's you know everyone fixes something for themselves, take something out of the deep freeze, throw it in the microwave, and take it, or just don't bother, just go out to some fast food place, or call a phone a pizza at home, and it's just, eating has become a function. There's no there's no pleasure in that. So, uh, who's cooking for Krishna? Radharani. Mother Yashoda knows that Radharani has a blessing from Durvasa Muni that anything that Radha cooks will be very tasty and very nutritious. Whoever takes that will never get sick. So, Yashoda calls Radha to cook for Krishna. The Yashoda is very affectionate toward Radha. He doesn't know about Radha's... Uh, the extent of Radha's affection for Krishna, she's not supposed to be affectionate toward Krishna. In this way, uh, Radha is officially allowed to come and serve Krishna. Here it's described she cooks various vegetables for Krishna. Paramanande Krishna Karena Bhojan. Very happily, in Krishna takes his food. And... Uh, Krishna's pastimes are full of fun and pleasure. Islam. And one of the main sources of fun and pleasure is the local buffoon, Madhu Mangal, who's uh, famous for eating sweets by any means. Chale bale, by, by trickery, by force, by any means, he'll grab the sweets and eat as many as he can. Bala is not And he has a very big capacity. Uh, so he becomes very like happy Krishna. when he has lots of sweets. He gets lots of sweets here, and he makes some sound. By big, <laughs> someone who's got a big fat body, they can make some sound like this. And he calls out, hurry ball, as he's making this quack, quack, quack sound of noise. He's saying hurry ball because he feels very happy. He's got lots of sweets. So uh, Krishna is not supposed to look at the gopis, but he does out of the corner of his eye, hoping that no one will notice. Uh, he looks at Radha and the other gopis. And very, uh, feeling great satisfaction, Krishna eats in the house of Mother Yashoda. So again, we have uh, Krishna's happiness is again expressed here. Krishna's, Krishna's So, what is his satisfaction? It's saying Krishna is very satisfied by eating, but he's, a, he's also satisfied by seeing Radha and the gopis. So after finishing food, Krishna takes uh, scented water or flavored water, mm-hmm. very nicely flavored water. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Krishna and all the cowherd boys go to wash their faces, to wash their mouths, go in lines there to wash them. So having, uh, they wash their hands and mouths, and then all the sakas, all the cowherd boys, friends of Krishna, they very happily, again the word happy is given, go to rest along with Balade. So up to now we've had the, uh, the gopis in a loving, in a uh, conjugal, Prabhupada used that word, conjugal loving relationship with Krishna. They've been described, Nanda and Yashoda, who are in a parental relationship with Krishna, they've been described. The cowherd boys who are in a uh, friendly relationship with Krishna have been described. Now we'll describe and now uh, will be mentioned some of the servants of Krishna. Some of the household servants of in the house of Nanda Maha, Jambul and Rasal, they uh, they bring a pan spiced pan. And Krishna Chandra, very beautiful name for Krishna. Krishna, who's just like the moon, or 
he uh, takes this pan and very happily goes to sleep. And another servant called Vishalaka waves a uh, fan, peacock fan, and a chamor, that uh, cow's tail uh, fan, he waves that while Krishna rests. Yeah, and again, twice it says Krishna very happily goes to sleep. And he goes to sleep on an excellent bed. Everything is first class for Krishna. No, there's no shortage. The devotees, they do, they make everything very nicely for Krishna. They just want to see that Krishna is happy. And they're prepared to, to go to much trouble to make Krishna happy. Nowadays, like I was saying, nowadays they want fast food. Just somehow or other get something and eat it. But to prepare a meal like this will take many people much time. To prepare a real meal takes much more time than it does than for people to eat it. But that's the, uh, that's the pleasure of the cooks, that they take much trouble and see everyone satisfied. So on the order of uh, Yashoda, Danishta, another household uh, maidservant, brings what is now Krishna's prasad, Krishna's remnants, which are and gives that to Radha, which Radha enjoys with great love. And the uh, and then still there's some left over, and Lalita and the other Sakis, the other Gopi friends of Radha, they take whatever left over, whatever is left over from that. And within their minds, again, Sukhe happily, they uh, glorify the qualities of Radha and Krishna. So. Uh, Again, happy, happiness. Opet srećam. Suke. Suke. In happiness. And within their minds they glorify Radha and Krishna because they cannot do so openly in the, uh, in front of everyone. Uslom. The, the, the love of Radha and Krishna is a secret affair. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, describes himself that he's, de- that he's singing, he's describing the Bhoga Arati. And he describes himself as one whose only delight is in Hari Lila, in the pastimes of Krishna. The original song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Bhogarati Gai She Bhakati Vinod, but someone at some point changed it to Thakur Bhakati Vinod. What's the original? The original says, She, that Bhakti Vinod. I don't know if Bhakti Vinod anywhere it describes himself as Thakur. But it actually subtly changes the meaning also. That She Bhakti Vinod means that Bhakti Vinod whose only pleasure is in Hari Lila. That, that, that he's specifically, he, he's emphasizing the point. So I don't like that change. Bhogarati Gai She Bhakti Vinod. That brings him right into the, the, we'll find in several of the songs of Bhakti Vinod Thako that he's, it's he's right there. This Hari Lila, this this is he's not describing it as some kind of fiction, but he's all the pastimes are just he's there. He knows exactly what is going on. Uh, just like in his uh, Shoka Shatana, he does a series of songs which describe the pastime when uh, Shiva's Thakur's son died and uh, he died in while Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the house performing Kirtan. So Bhakti Nau Thakur describes this pastime in a series of songs and at the end of each song he, he gives a comment just like now Bhakti Vinod is afraid that the, uh, the the Kirtan, the ecstasy of Kirtan will be will be uh, spoiled. So he is there and his pleasure is uh, in Hari Lila and he's kindly uh, committed that to writing so that we can also have some glimpse into the Vinoda, the, the pleasure of Bhakti that Bhakti Vinod uh, presents to us. 
So this is one of the many gifts of Bhakti Nur Thakur, this Bhogarati, Bhogragarati, this uh, offering. So, any questions? There may not be so many questions about this, but anything else? So, so if, we, if we have a tendency that we eat to, like to eat nice food, then we can cook nice food for Krishna and change that propensity that, what, what do I like to eat? I'd like to eat this and that and this, something else. Oh, what about this? That would be great. But if we cook for Krishna, we, we, we stop thinking what I would like to eat and we start thinking, oh, I can cook this for Krishna and that for Krishna. Then we become purified. Hmm. Yeah, that's a question. In Krishna's kitchen, we use a lot of sugar, uh, but the sugar is <clears throat> not uh, healthy for the body. Uh, so, so what do you think about this? We use big quantities of sugar. Yeah, Krishna eats, lot of, <coughs> Krishna eats a lot of sugar and dairy products. Makan Mishri, that's common offering to Krishna in the morning. Freshly made butter with sugar cubes. Postum- freshly made butter, not that, not that what you buy here in the shop, but it's not with salt in it, just fresh and then that's a common. So, yeah, Krishna likes all these things. Krishna doesn't get sick from eating all these things. So you can eat your raw food diet and be healthy. Krishna will eat all the things, all the nice tasty things offered by his devotees. Okay. Yeah. Pizza? No, that's not mentioned here. <laughs> you want pizzas? Then you have to stay here. Krishna doesn't eat pizzas. Yeah, and and Krishna, you have to make your senses. We have to make our senses in line with Krishna's. That's, I guess that's one of the disadvantages of being brought up in a different culture. Hmm. Personally, I can never understand what's so attractive about a pizza. What's so great about it? I don't know. Everyone's crazy over pizza. And it's just yeah, but the offer with love means you offer what Krishna wants, not what you want. That's love, isn't it? So, yeah, but then you have to see what, what the Acharyas describe what Krishna wants. Is We learn what is Krishna conscious, what Krishna likes from the Shastra and from the Acharyas. Sometimes the offerings are very strange. You see, some, just some Bonacca piece of soup. cheese and tomato sauce and Thai are standing there. They'll look at that and turn around and run off somewhere. <laughs> All right, yeah. In which they're eaten. Yeah, this is according to Bengali order of eating. The uh, In Ayurveda, it's, it's recommended in a different order. The sweet Ayurveda. comes at the beginning and the bitter at Sladko the end. Poste. And then again, a little sweet at the end. In, at na least poche. according to what Ayurveda we have today. But uh, this is according to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order. Well, as Prabhupada said, about uh, questions about the spiritual world, you go there, then you'll find out. Krishna has a good appetite. He has a he has a like a big meal in the morning. He takes a big lunch at midday, then a big meal at night. And during the middle of the night, when they take a break in the dancing pastimes, they have they have all kinds of things to eat. I mean, he eats a lot. Hmm. Yeah, Gornitaya, the they're the garbage bin for everything. <laughs> Gone it into a garbage bin. Anything, anything rubbish you can offer to them. There's the, there's some idea that Gone don't accept any offenses, so we can make all the offenses we like to them. This very thinking is offensive. They may not accept offenses, but the dust of their lotus feet, namely their devotees, will not be pleased, and they won't let you come anywhere near Gone Itai. are there to facilitate our sense gratification in under the guise of Krishna consciousness. Another rascaldom is this bogus, uh, uninstalled deities nonsense. We can do anything we like because they're not installed deities. There's no such thing as worshipping uninstalled deities. If you're worshipping, are they God or they're not God? 
If they're deities, they're deities. They have to be served as deities. If they're not deities, then it's idol worship. This is a post-1977 ISKCON invention. Uninstalled deities. Deity worship is very serious business. That's why uh, only Brahmanas are allowed to do it. Of course, in ISKCON today, we've also invented that uh, anyone, anyone can do anything. That's not the proper standard. Anyone can come in off the street and just, you know, and uh, in their jeans and they can do Abhishek of deities, for instance. Yeah, what's your question? Well, the idea is that in the temple everything should be offered to the deity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, yeah. The, 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 the proper standard is that everything should be offered to the deity. Now, in many temples, you see, in many temples, traditional temples, there's the deity... And then the Brahmanas have their house, houses around the temple. So and they'll take some, they'll be given some prasad from the deity, and in their home they'll cook separately also. And what they cook in the home is offered to Shalagran. One important point about taking prasad is that um, it's meant to curb our tendency towards sense gratification. Krishna bara doya moi kori bare jiba joy shaprasad on bhai. So Krishna being very kind has given us his prasad so that we can conquer the desire of the, the, the pushing of the tongue. So uh, one attitude is to offer to Krishna what he likes and take his remnants. Another attitude is to offer Krishna what I like and then Krishna becomes an offering machine. Another consideration is that we should uh, take uh, prasad, that kind of food which we can uh, digest easily and which nourishes our body so that we can keep our body fit for serving Krishna. That's also a consideration. So these are various considerations. And it is better to offer what we like to Krishna first, but we can't expect to really, uh, if we maintain this attitude, we can't expect to come to the point of, Krish- of actual Krishna consciousness. That's, that's why, that's one reason we have deities. So the, the idea of having deities is that we offer everything that is, everything that they like to them, and in this way we get trained to serve Krishna. That's why deity worship means there has to be a high standard, because Krishna is served at a high standard, according to his pleasure. That's why if we water down all the standards and just do what we want, how we want, whenever we want, uh, then uh, what's the point of deity worship? Just we, we get some pleasure from looking at the deity. The whole meaning of deity worship is lost. Hmm. You have heard that in some place in India, some brahmanas taste the food before it's offered and they they don't swallow it. Is it bona fide? I never heard this. Where is this? Oh, that's Croatia. (laughs) Really? I never heard. It's the first time I ever heard of that. I never heard that before. It's, well, it may be, but certainly that was that's not the general standard and that's not the standard given to us by Prabhupada. So I don't know which Gorya Mat that is because uh, I have, you know, I've seen and been with many Gorya Mat people, but I never heard of that before. Yes, Croatia is not the standard, is it? You had two questions. What's the other one? If we have great faith in prasad and we take it even if we're sick and it's not digestible to us, will it cure us? Or will it not make us more sick? Well, um, if we're sick, why should we take it? We say we have great faith in prasad, but uh, the devotee acts in a manner, he, he treats his body in a manner that is conducive for performing Krishna's service. We find in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that one day Govinda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's servant, brought prasad to Haidas Thakur, but Haidas Thakur didn't want to take it because apparently he was he seemed to be sick. 
So Haida said that, uh, well, I can't take it because I didn't finish my rounds. He was chanting very slowly, apparently sick. But I can't refuse it because it's the Lord Prasad. So he just took a tiny little morsel. So that can be a guide for us also. Not that I'm sick, but anyway I'll take Prasad because I have great faith in it. There may be some foods they cure sickness. Srila Prabhupada is widely quoted as having said, feed a cold and starve a fever. Yeah, fever means when you have a temperature, you know. So in some sicknesses you should eat and in some you shouldn't. If someone's suffering from anorexia, they should be induced to eat. Srila Prabhupada said that uh, diabetes is a disease of overeating and tuberculosis of, of insufficient nutrition, undereating. Mm. Yeah, translate that. Prasadam is Krishna, then how can we become sick of Krishna? Yes, that's true, but uh, we relate with Krishna's different manifestations in different ways. Krishna in the form of food should be, in Shastra we find, should be taken in moderation. It, then, according to that understanding, we, sh we should just go on eating all day, non-stop, all day, all night. But even Krishna himself doesn't only eat, he does other things also. Prasad is Krishna, but we, uh, we uh, if we go on and on and on eating, then we'll, it's, it's not the proper way to uh, serve Krishna in that form. For that matter, the deity dress is also uh, non-different from Krishna. So we should eat the deity dress. We fan Krishna with a peacock fan. Should we? Should we fan him with a piece of cake, which is offered to Krishna? Yeah. We should understand how to appropriately serve Krishna in his various manifestations. Question. Various styles of cooking, yeah, you'll find in different parts of India. Bengali style, Puri style, South Indian style. It's, it's different styles in different parts of India, yeah, then. When Prabhupada came to the West, he introduced chapati, sabji, dal, all these things. <clears throat> Deep freeze? Deep freeze? Deep freeze. Yeah, if there is, if not, some item is not available, for example, some yeah. vegetable is not available. Yeah. And some yeah, Prabhupada then. allowed uh, tomatoes, potatoes, and various items which are not traditionally allowed in Indian cuisine. The Traditional Kurumpir. Indian cuisine, you won't find many of the vegetables in the West. That's true. Prabhupada made some allowance. It's true, Prabhupada made some allowance, but at the same time, the, the, uh, the standard in the temples... Well, the basic uh, offering to the deity was along the lines of traditional Indian, what we call traditional Indian foods, which are rare to find in temples nowadays. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the difference between serving the Lord in His three-dimensional deity form and his two-dimensional picture form. Should we offer Tulasi leaves to the picture form of the Lord? Um, Mass-produced pictures are a modern phenomenon. Previously, a uh, picture had to be painted. Now with uh, printing, there, there are so many pictures, it's become a very common thing. I remember once in Calcutta, in, at the BBT office, some book covers with pictures of Krishna and Prabhupada, because in the BBT there'll be so many, they were, being, they were put under a door to keep the door open. There were there's some kami workers were there, they'd done that. So I became quite angry with them. I came the next day and they'd put them back again. So mass production can also make us uh, uh, less reverent. We think, ah, oh, there's so many pictures. It's, a, it's a, an advantage, but it can become, due to our attitude, a disadvantage also. So, uh, traditionally, paintings, there weren't many, and uh, in 
in I was saying in in the home people they would worship the shalagram or they would also they may have a painting of the deity and offer food in the house like that. But uh, worshipping the Lord in his two-dimensional form, there is a lot less to be done than in his three-dimensional form. Cool. Bathe and dress the picture form, at least te... in the same way. You can only do it mentally or you can bathe by pouring some water in front of the deity, but you not in exactly the same way as the uh, three-dimensional. Of course, Krishna is multidimensional. He's not limited by any dimensions. So it is, uh, we can say, a widespread convention that the the worship of the Lord in his picture form is not done uh, with the same, uh, what should we say, not with, not not in, in in as elaborate a manner as the Lord in his. Uh, uh, three di- for want of a better term, three-dimensional form. When installing deities in Los Angeles, Prabhupada said that that uh, if you think this is a brass-made idol, then he will remain forever to you. For you, he will remain a brass-made idol. Shla Prabhupada je rekao kad je instalirao božanstva u Los Angelesu da ako vi mislite da je ovo uh, idol od metala, od bronce, onda će on za vas... Bronze and brass are different things. I don't know if... I don't know uh, ako vi mislite da je ovo... Anyway, the same. Da je ovo idol od mjeda, uh, on, on će za vas i ostati idol od mjeda. The Prabhupada said that if you accept that this is Krishna, then this Krishna will talk with you. Krishna has come because he wants to talk to you. So it depends a lot on uh, how we accept that form. There's a description once Srila Prabhupada was sick and uh, he had, he was quite sick, or we should say he was demonstrating the pastime of apparently being sick because a pure devotee is not affected by material nature. That's the proper way to say it. So he had a picture of Nushimha Dev in his room with the idea that we're calling Nishimha Dev for the protection of his devotee. Or, or praying to Nishimha Dev for the protection of his devotee. So sometimes Srila Prabhupada had to, uh, because he wouldn't walk all the way to the bathroom, he would uh, urinate. That system is there. They have a pot in the room and you urinate in the room and he would apologize to Lord Nishimha that I'm, I'm doing this in front of you. And seeing the picture as, as the Lord himself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for some time worshipped a Govardhan Shila and a uh, Gunja Mala, this, uh, this, this necklace made from uh, Gunja berries. And he gave, after some time, he gave that to Raghunath Das Goswami to worship. And Raghunath Das saw the Govardhan Shila as directly as Krishna and the Gunja Mala as Radha. Even though his worship was very simple. So it depends a lot on our vision that tulasi leaves should not be offered to pictures. Da se tulasi cvijet ne why nudi why slikama. Zašto bi to bilo tako? Yeah. I I'm not aware of any such injunction tulasi to the Lord in his picture. Everything should be checked according to guru sadhu and shastra. And to qualify that statement more, this, this is uh uh yeah, I'll qualify that statement more. To qualify it means it, it means uh, I guess a modification or or to, or, or, a, or a clarification. Um, many times devotees say, "Well, this Prabhupada disciple said this, or that Prabhupada disciple said that, or this GBC said this," but they should also verify what they say with Guru Sadhu and Shastra. Trama. Spiritual authorities derive their authority from the previous authorities, not that they're independent authorities. Just like, for instance, in many places I go, they, I say that, well, our GB says said it's okay to worship the deities with non-Brahmins. But on what authority do they say that? By being a GBC member, do they have the authority to introduce something that Srila, that Srila Prabhupada and no previous Acharya ever introduced? No. 
And even uh, Srila Prabhupada made many adjustments for preaching in the West. We shouldn't necessarily think that everything Srila Prabhupada, the adjustments that Srila Prabhupada meant for the West are meant to, uh, they're meant to be eternal standards or, or, or that we shouldn't come up to the uh, traditional standards. Prabhupada preached among the Mlechas and Yavanas, but he wanted them to become Brahmins. It's not that they should remain Mlechas and Yavanas forever should see what the actual standard is according to the tradition, the acharyas and the shastra and endeavor to come up to them. But we should be going in that direction and not coming back in the other direction, not going back to the Malecha Yavana level on, on the plea. Or there are so many excuses. Time, place and circumstance is a common one. The whole point is that we're supposed to be pleasing Krishna. So we have to see what Krishna is pleased by and come to that level. It's it's not the common idea that well whatever I can whatever I can do that's okay whatever's okay for me that's okay for, if it's good for me it's good for Krishna no it's it's around the other way it's uh, the casual relaxed don't strain yourself approach will never take us back to God we have to surrender to Krishna we have to give every drop of our energy for Krishna. But you know, Thakur was criticized by others. Bhaktis Dhansasrari Thakur a lot more was criticized by others. Prabhupada was also criticized. They had some insights into how to preach and how to establish things. Revolutionary ideas for preaching. Yeah. Bhaktis Dhansasrari didn't introduce Yukta by Raghu. But he uh, applied the he applied the principle in a manner that uh, had not been conceived of to that extent. Just like, for instance, um, just one example. Yeah, how you see, there's the there's the principle and there's the adjustment. In preaching, we may make many adjustments, but the principle has to be understood. Just like, for instance. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati. Yeah, are you... Yeah. For what now? Sorry, okay. Not the gist of it. This should be understood clearly that... Uh, it. Um, just like, for instance, one example. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati uh, had, sometimes had chairs put in the temple room when people who considered themselves respectable, modern people would come they would sit on chairs, which was never considered or allowed previously. Because people who think themselves very modern, they consider it below their dignity to sit on the floor, as yeah. is traditionally done. One is to sit at the lotus feet of the guru. So that was allowed just to uh, facilitate people who otherwise would not listen at all to come and listen to what he had to say. But if they come to the point of being disciples, then they should sit at the feet. It's not that they remain on a chair forever. We should understand this principle of Yukta Vairagya. If it's misunderstood, then there's a big problem. I was told that uh, a Bhakti Shastri teacher in the course gave her understanding of Yukta Vairagya. That, uh, well, you want to eat some halava, but you're only allowed to take prasadam, so you cook it and offer it to Krishna, and then you take it, and that's called Yukta Vairagya, according to her mispreaching. That while you're engaging in sense gratification, oh, remember to offer it to Krishna. So be careful what you hear from various supposedly authorized sources. You could end up with a serious misunderstanding. Yukta Vairagya, what's the verse? Who can say what is the verse? Anasaktasya vishayan yathaham upayunjataha nirbandha krishna sambandhe yuktam vairagyam uchyate. The first thing is stated that one, one who is not attached to sense gratification, and our Bhakti Shastri teachers said, well, if you want sense gratification, you just you make a show of offering it to Krishna first. So we completely misunderstood it. Anas, one who is not attached to, to sense object, but who can Pramashla. utilize all objects in the service of Krishna, understanding their relationship to Krishna. Mojis. That is called Yukta Vairagya, or applied renunciation. So the idea that I will enjoy sense gratification and some, somehow rather bring Krishna into the picture, that is not Yukta Vairagya. 
So we'll finish there. Have some kirtan. What is actual bhakti? You can learn from Prabhupada's books, from this uh, bhakti you know, taco song. Please turn off your cell phone. Just like I was explaining, if you hear that all these uh, nice items that are offered to Krishna, we may become ourselves enlivened to eat, but a pure devotee becomes enlivened uh, hearing how Krishna...